It has been a fascinating dynamic over the past couple of years for me to watch as Roman Reigns has become an increasingly more prominently figured component of WWE programming and John Cena has become more part-time and a lesser featured component of WWE programming. Some of the hate that was on Cena for all those years is still there, but it's kind of in the background. It's kind of simmering. And it has really shifted and translated over to Roman Reigns. And it's not so much a matter of absence making the heart grow fonder. I think it's more so that after so many years of hating on one guy, now you see another guy that is going down that same path and you realize, my God, this guy still has another decade potentially of this. I want to try and nip this in the bud right now. I want to rebel against this right now like it's going to make any difference because all those years of hijacking shows with Cena did a whole lot of good, right? So we hate Reigns now more than Cena. It's not absence make the heart grow fonder. It's just this is fresher and we can see what's coming. And in part, Cena isn't pounded down your throats as much because he's not there as much. And now you've kind of got the new toy. So that's where the interest is. On top of that, you have a lot of kids, if you really think about this, that grew up on Cena as their be-all, end-all, as their hero throughout the mid to late 2000s and the early portion of this decade that are now adults that are coming on here on the internet and polluting this place with their pro-Cena propaganda, their intellectual diarrhea. Don't be fooled and don't be mistaken. Just because he's not there as much doesn't change things. Just because we've got kids that used to grow up on Cena that are now adults polluting the airwaves with their pro Cena file garbage doesn't change the fact that John Cena still sucks. And don't hit me with things like, oh, he was the top guy for over the decade. He was a top guy for over a decade because the WWE made it that way. He was a prop for them. After Lesnar left in 2004, they looked for guys that they knew, they felt, were going to be there for years no matter what, in part because they weren't talented enough to go play another sport, do anything else, do movies for a long period of time. And do 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 John Cena stepped into that freaking void. To sit there and tell me, well, he sold the most merch. It's easier to sell the most merch when it is the most prominently featured week in and week out when you have the most of his merch available on the website, both in terms of varieties, styles, colors, sizes, at the live events, same thing. So even at periods of time where you have guys like Daniel Bryan or CM Punk have that hot streak and get massively over in that period of time, they could no way, shape, or form ever consistently outperform John Cena in merch sales because the WWE would intentionally sabotage them to continue to artificially prop up their prop in John Cena and point to him as their cash cow. He was a cash cow only in the WWE's mind because the WWE made it that way. And then to sit there and use this argument of he was over top guy for over a decade and he was there and he answered the bell and all this other crap. So what? Look at the loss of domestic viewership here in the U.S. Look at the loss of profits compared to what they have been in the past, especially once adjusted for inflation. And look at the number of talents that were ruined over a decade plus by always having to build them up just to feed them to fucking Super Cena. Look at the fan base, millions of fans that went to MMA and other forms of entertainment that are in no way, shape, or form associated with WWE. It kind of pokes a massive freaking gaping hole the sides of Kelly Kelly's VJJ to sit there and tell me, well, he was the top guy for over a decade. He was the top guy for over a decade for a company that lost millions of fans and doesn't have nearly the same imprint that it once did. How is that something to positively point to? Oh, the charity work, he was great with the kids. Like, others don't do it. Like, he's the only one that ever does Make-A-Wish or these other charitable things. Like, the company doesn't do other philanthropic things in part because philanthropy is the new business model of the 21st century. Give me a freaking break. And it's not like he's not told to do this at times. It's not like the WWE doesn't pay him to do it at times. If a company is going to tell you to do these events and do these appearances and they're going to pay you for it, are you going to tell them no? It's just the WWE made sure they featured John Cena doing this more than anybody else because, again, it goes back into being the prop of WWE and they made sure they gave him more opportunities than anybody else. And look, he was a good soldier doing all the media appearances and all this other crap, but the real reason for that long term is Cena was trying to get himself away from WWE because he's a fucking hypocrite. All that time he spent for years blasting The Rock and putting The Rock on blast for turning his back on WWE, for going off to Hollywood and doing movies. The whole reason John Cena was blasting him was not because he loved the WWE, it was not because he thought poorly of The Rock. It was because he was freaking jealous. 
And how do you know that? Because John Cena, for all intents and purposes, to a much lesser degree, because he's nowhere near the talent or personality or star power of The Rock, is doing the same damn thing. He's a hypocrite. And he deserves to be called out on it. All that crap that you tried to do over the years, talking crap about The Rock, just to get yourself more over because you're pathetic. Now you're doing the same thing and it's okay, right? Bullshit. And then they get, speaking of bullshit, this whole argument, well, he's gotten better in the ring. 15 years later, he still can't tell an in-ring story to save his damn life. If he's sitting there getting beat down, all of a sudden he just pops up and there's a freaking shoulder block. There's this, there's that. AA out of nowhere, it's all stupid. A Cena match is literally crappy spot to crappy spot to crappy spot to here's my comeback crappy spot and usually I still go freaking over. He's expanded his offense. So what? He expanded his offense to include more sloppy looking bocce type crap. You could do five moves of doom and execute them incredibly well. Like a Randy Orton. Like a Hunter. Or you can sit there and have 20 or 30 moves and do none of them well. And that's exactly what John Cena does. An awful lot of botches, even with that expanded offense, everything still looks like shit. Especially that horrible looking submission finisher. After all of these years, he still can't get the STFU right. It looks ridiculous. Because John Cena, after all these years, still looks ridiculous in the ring. And if anything, this comes in part from association in recent years with guys like CM Punk and Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles, Nakamura. Those guys being actually good in the ring has translated into Cena looking better in the ring, but he's not better in the ring. He just gets elevated by association because those other guys have to carry him. Look how he calls his matches when he's the guy clearly calling it. They're shit. And then you're going to hit a, get hit a course, and I know I am in the comments, oh, he can cut a promo, that typically follows about three different um, flows, if you will. Oh, I got beaten down, and I'm going to talk real low for a while. And then I'm going to try and break into my Hogan-esque type of rise up and hustle loyalty and respect, and you can't see me, do, 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 do. And all this crap trying to be like Hogan, and he will never be like Hogan, because Hogan was better with his words, and sir as hell had more force of personality and charisma than Cena could ever have on his best freaking day. Give me a break. The whole beating down and rise up crap, what the hell are you getting down for? Because we know you're ultimately still going to plow through 99% of the opponents put in front of you. It looks ridiculous and it's stupid. And here's a guy that's supposed to be the kid's hero all along but will routinely say things like bitch and ass and make fat jokes and all this other crap. Who's the fucking hero to a kid here? This is more so the attitude era where we're saying it's not for kids, but we're targeting kids because the kids like this cool shit. There's swearing and there's profanity and there's sexual innuendos and the kids are down with this. So we're appealing to kids by not appealing to kids. We actually are appealing to them more. This is the kind of crap that scene is doing, but he's supposed to be a face of the fucking PG era. He's supposed to be vanilla Fucking Wonder Bread is all hell. And you're sitting there saying bitch and ass like whose parents would want to sit there and take their kids to that and have their top hero when they're six years old here and this guy says, I'm going to kick your ass, bitch. Like who does that? And then all the snide remarks he'll make in promos that are just unnecessary, completely unrelated, just to try and intentionally throw the other guy off, just to make them look foolish, just so that way he can feel like he got a little more over. Screw Cena and his promos, they've sucked and they've sucked for years. Every once in a while, yes, he pulls one out of his ass. I'll give you that. But one out of every 12 is not a good success ratio, even in Major League Baseball. Where being a 300 hitter makes you an all-star. What he does is below the Mendoza line and would have him quickly down at freaking single A ball. Playing behind Tim Tebow. And this whole thing now, what really pisses me off, is now we've got people that are buying into the BS that he's putting people over. And he's unselfish. Bullocks! He strategically puts people over, such as CM Punk, such as Daniel Bryan, such as AJ Styles, such as Nakamura... Because by him putting them over, he feels like the hardcore, serious male adult fans aren't going to hate him as much. This is all a work by Cena. And so many of you have been worked so masterfully well. It's the one thing Cena can do from a work standpoint that is absolutely mwah, say magnifique genius. He's conned and tricked and fooled a lot of you into believing in the later stages of his career that he is unselfish. 
No, he picks and chooses his spots where he strategically puts somebody over because it will still make him look better by association. And it doesn't take away from in recent years, not to mention all the other bodies that have been laid out by Super Cena over the years, the Rusevs and the Wyatts and the Rybacks and the Barretts of the world and so many others, but especially in the past few years, Rusev and Wyatt, they could have been helped exponentially by Cena doing business and putting them over and putting them over the right way. And of course he did it. And look at where the hell both of them are now. Rusev's reportedly asking for his release. And Bray Wyatt, when he's not face down in JoJo's muff, might as well be doing the same damn thing. He puts over the guys that it doesn't matter to make himself look better. And he doesn't put over the guys that truly needed it, that truly could have gotten a big boost from going over on freaking John Cena. And even if you say, well, he lost to The Miz at WrestleMania 27, that was because The Rock got involved because The Miz was just used as a plot device to get to Rock Cena at 28 and eventually 29 too. And let's not forget that Cena went over him afterwards and then went after him again when you still had A-Ride there and it was a glorified two-on-one handicap match. Don't give me that shit. A decade of destruction doesn't go away for two years of sometimes jobbing and sometimes not. Bullshit to that. And he selfishly stayed the same for all these years. When WWE needed fresh, he stayed the same. When his act got played out, he stayed the same. When he needed to turn heel, which he frankly always has been heel because everything about him is heelish. There is nothing babyface about him whatsoever in terms of an on-screen character. Everything about him is villainous. He is the obstacle. He is the mountaintop to climb. That makes him the bad guy, not the good guy. Instead of changing creatively and making him the heel, which would eventually actually make him the hero, he just stayed the same. And as much as you want to talk about Vince, and this is Vince, and this is Vince, I remember a few years ago, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he had signed off at one point in time on Sheamus being the top guy and Cena turning heel, and it didn't happen. And why didn't it happen? Because Cena was too selfish to make it happen. Don't sit there and tell me that one of the founders of the fucking breakfast club doesn't have enough creative control to say, Vince, we need to do this. And it's ridiculous because he selfishly undercut himself by trying to stubbornly cling to his spot for all these years that you eventually, of course, got a diminishing return from Cena the hero. And now as he comes back as a part-timer, you get an even larger diminishing return because you never had a change in character to make him refresh when he came back and did this crap. He was selfish staying the same all these years, not changing his look, not changing the way he worked, not changing the way he wrestled, not changing anything important at all. His fucking theme music stayed the same for over a decade. Give me a break. And then we get down to even recently, this no fucks given Cena, where he makes stupid faces during serious moments. That's nothing more than him playing games and saying, I could do whatever the hell I want. I'm super Cena. All the while undercutting the guy that he's in the ring with and ruining the whole moment. You saw it on Raw this week. Miz is sitting there saying all this serious crap and Cena's trying to mock him. Shut the hell up. Miz is trying to get himself over. The crowd is receptive. Let him get over. Don't sit there and go with your no craps given John Cena. I can make the little smart ass snide remarks and look stupid and ruin the whole segment because you do. Like you have time after time for over a decade. Your jokes aren't funny. Your remarks aren't clever. They're just stupid because John Cena is stupid. All this going off the reservation crap to amuse himself and make others look bad is still the same selfish crap that he's been doing for years. Now occasionally he just eats a pin for somebody. So you got all these young whippersnappers now. They've grown up. And they're going to look at me like angry man yells at clouds. Who are going to sit there and pollute the internet with all this pro to pop propaganda. This intellectual diarrhea. The fact is, after so many years, no matter how much you think time changes things, a lot of this crap still change, doesn't change. It stays the same. And so many years of damage don't just magically get undone. Don't fall for it. John Cena still sucks. He always has, and he always will, and you know that to be true. And always remember, even if you didn't like this video, with OTR Central, it's not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Bye.